Welcome to Ditch the Classroom. This is your host, Ariana Vernier, and I'm so excited that you're here. I'm a teacher turned business coach who is so passionate about helping fellow mamas like you ditch the classroom and pursue your big, hairy, scary dreams. Imagine a life where you could still impact the world, but do so while following your passions and spending more time with your babies. In Ditch the Classroom, we'll explore ways you can do just that. Myself, guest experts, and amazing teachers who have also built a successful business will share tools, tips, and resources to help you ditch the classroom too. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ditch the Classroom podcast. Today's a little bit of a different episode. We are interviewing Dory Stewart. She is a former teacher of 11 years, and she's the founder of The Franchising Spot and host of the She Turned Entrepreneur podcast. In today's episode, she's going to be sharing how she was able to start her own franchise business and really take the steps to leave teaching and grow her business and eventually even sell it to make a profit. So super inspiring. So excited to share this interview with you. But before we do, I want to invite you to register for the free Launch Your Virtual Assistant Business Workshop, which starts this Thursday, April 21st. You can register for the workshop by visiting arianavernier.com forward slash free dash workshop. That's A-R-I-A-N-N-A-V-E-R-N-I-E-R.com forward slash free dash workshop, or you can click the link in the show notes. This workshop will help you gain clarity on what services would light you up and make you so excited to work on your business every day, where to find paying clients to help you replace your teaching income quickly, and the top three mistakes new freelancers and virtual assistants make so you can avoid them and start working from home with your babies sooner. There will also be a special gift for those who register, as well as an exciting giveaway. But registration closes next Thursday, April 21st, so make sure to get signed up ASAP. All right, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, Dory. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so I would love if you would just kind of start with sharing a little bit about your journey. I know you were a teacher and you're no longer. So I would love if you could just kind of share how long you taught, what you taught, and then kind of just a summary of how you got to where you are now. Sure. Yeah. So my, yeah, my background is in education. I actually have my undergrad degree in math and science, elementary, middle education, and my master's degree is in technology education. And that led me to teach engineering at the high school level. So I taught for 11 years. And throughout that time, I was also my high school's advisor of the Technology Student Association. And so for those who aren't um, familiar with what TSA is, it's uh, an after school club that students can compete against students across the world in various STEM competitions. And so I was able to grow that club throughout my 11 years from eight students my first year to 180 students my last year. And I was able through that process to reach a lot of students who otherwise didn't know what engineering was. And I got a lot of kids who would say, especially girls, who would say things like, oh, I wish I had taken your classes sooner. I wish I learned about what engineering was sooner. And throughout that process, I also had my own kids. And so, you know, this was a volunteer gig for me. I was spending a lot of time after school and on weekends and then taking them to competitions all over the country during the summers. And so my kids kind of grew up watching what my high school students were doing, and they were keeping tabs on what everyone was doing. And so I had an opportunity one summer to take my students to a competition in Orlando, Florida, and I decided my own kids would never forgive me if I didn't take them to Orlando. So (laughs) we made a Disney trip out of it, and I brought them with me, and... 
I thought I was going to get a lot of moaning and groaning and complaining that they had to watch all these competitions and not go to Disney. But they actually would wake up each morning and ask, you know, which competitions are we going to get to see today? And, you know, they grew a bond with my students as well. And so they were keeping tabs on how the students were ranking in the competitions. And I remember my son being upset one day that he couldn't compete too. (laughs) And so that experience really had me thinking, okay, how can I reach more kids in engineering at a younger age? So the combination of my own kids being inspired by what my high school students were doing, but also with the girls saying to me, I wish I knew about this sooner. So this was back in 2008, and at that time, STEM wasn't much of a buzzword, and engineering wasn't taught at the elementary level, at least in Virginia, unless the kids were involved in the gifted and talented program. And so I got a flyer home in my kid's backpack one day that was asking for parents if they had a hobby or a business, if they wanted to teach an after school program for a fundraiser. And I decided to take what I was doing with my high school students and I changed it up to make it more developmentally appropriate for the elementary age kids. And I taught a civil engineering class and the kids had a blast. The parents were impressed. Um, The principal and the teachers asked me to come back. And I had uh, a parent pull me aside and, you know, say, um, you know, are you offering any summer camps? And someone asked if I did birthday parties. And so... I saw a business opportunity there, and that's how my business was born. I started Engineering for Kids uh, after that that first after-school course experience. That's so cool. I didn't know that whole background, so that's awesome to hear <laughs> just, you know, kind of the setup of how everything worked out. That's awesome. Thank you. So you were a teacher, and then you started the Engineering for Kids At what point did you realize, okay, it's time to leave the teaching profession and pursue this full time? That's a great question. So at first, it was just a side hustle for me. So for a while, it was a great way for me to make extra money because I was teaching in an after school environment and a summer camp environment. And I could cart my own kids around with me. So it was perfect for me then. And at the time, they were around ages six and eight at the time. So they were they were the perfect guinea pigs for my program. And they felt a lot of pride in, you know, coming to the classes with me, uh, you know, because their mom was the 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 boss. (laughs) And so at first, it was just a really great source of additional income. And it was after the first summer camp season where I thought that I would be lucky just to fill one camp. And this was at this point now, we're in 2009, and that was the summer of, or the year of the Great Recession. And so there were, you know, houses going up, Um, for foreclosure, left and right, people were being laid off, there was a lot of, you know, financial stress on families. And so I didn't think that it would grow into much of a business, I thought it would stay a side hustle. And what happened that first summer is I planned for three weeks of summer camps, I filled those camps, added more teachers so I could add more students and added more weeks of camps. And I ended up offering 10 weeks of camps and I filled every camp. And I remember I was renting classroom space at my local parks and recreation center. And I remember the coordinator of summer camps coming into the classroom and she saw my camp was full and you know kids were running around and having a blast. And she saw some of the things that we were doing and she was shocked. And she said, I cannot believe your camp is full, especially an engineering camp. And I said, well, why is that? Because, you know, of course, I'm thinking, of course, it's full. (laughs) This is amazing, right? And she said, my soccer camp is empty and my basketball camp is empty. And I'm usually bursting at the seams and we usually have a wait list and I, I can't even fill the camp. And so I think what was happening at that time, parents had a limited budget and they were looking at, okay, 
if we have one program we're going to put our child in this summer, we're going to put them in something educational and something that can help them long term with their future. And so the success of that summer made me start thinking, okay, I'm on to something here. This is a real business. And I started at that point making steps to quit my teaching job. I had already signed a contract for the following school year. So I finished out that next school year. But I spent that year building and preparing for the time when I was going to quit, which was, you know, 10 months after that. So, yeah, it it didn't start out that way. (laughs) No, but I think it's I think it's really cool that, you know, you said you had that that contract to fulfill for the following year. And then you, during that time, you were able to take the steps to really make sure you were prepared to leave. I was a little bit different. I left before I had anything in place, (laughs) but it's, I think it's really helpful to hear others who have been successful in taking those, those action steps while still teaching to get everything in in place for their new business. So that's, that's really inspiring. And I, I know my listeners will love it. Thank you. I mean, it was hard. I wanted to <laughs> jump in, you know, feet first and just, you know, go all out. And uh, so it, it took some patience, but I'm glad that I did that because I was actually a single mom at the time. And so I had to make sure that I could replace my income before I quit. So Definitely. So how did you determine which business model to use when you were growing your business? Oh, yeah. So that's a great question. So I ended up uh, opening my own learning center after that first year because it ended up costing me more money to rent classroom space through parks and recreation centers and other third party community centers. So I ended up opening up my own learning center and I was able to grow even more because of that. So at that point, I could offer homeschool programs and, you know, birthday parties in my own center, things like that. And so I was able to reach more people. And as the word got out, I started getting people asking me, hey, can you bring engineering for kids to this location and that location? And I even had people falling upon my website because they were Googling engineering programs for kids. And I had people from all over the world contact me to ask if they could either buy my curriculum or ask if I would bring engineering for kids to Chicago. And, you know, I'm in Virginia. And so that's, you know, impossible for me to bring engineering for kids to Chicago. And if I did, I would lose a lot of control if I went with a managed business model. So I started doing a ton of research on different growth models, and I found that franchising was the best business model that made sense for engineering for kids. You need an owner operator that knows their own community best. And so I started doing the work. I talked to anyone in the franchise industry that would talk to me. I talked to consultants. I talked to existing business owners. I talked to franchisees, franchisors, attorneys, um, anyone in the industry that would talk to me. Luckily, the franchising industry is a bunch of very friendly folks. (laughs) So I got a lot of advice. And then I found a fantastic franchise attorney. Um, I ended up getting my certified franchise executive credentials through the International Franchise Association. So I started taking classes. So I basically immersed myself in it. And by the end of 2011, my business was ready to franchise. And my first franchisee was operating at the beginning of 2012. And so then over the next 10 years, I was able to grow engineering for to 165 locations in 35 countries, reaching over a million students. That is phenomenal. That is so cool. Thank you. (laughs) It was very cool. And I am so just lucky that I got to go to India and be at the grand opening of the first international location in New Delhi. And getting to see the kids interact, 
in an aerospace engineering lesson that I had created in my little town of Stafford, Virginia, and watching these kids in New Delhi experience the lesson in the same way that the kids in Virginia experienced it. I mean, it was just like, I I had tears in my eyes watching it unfold. Coolest thing ever. And that just speaks to the amazingness of you and the amazingness of teachers that we can come up with these ideas that can turn into businesses that can impact so many. So if you had stayed in the classroom, you wouldn't have reached all the all the children that you've reached with your business now. So that is so, just so inspiring. Uh, thank you. I just, I think all teachers kind of, they, you know, like you see the students interact with your lesson and you see their experience and you see the magic happening, right? You see that aha moment. And I think that teachers know, like we know when it's good, we know the magic, and we know that it can be duplicated. And I just knew that what the kids were experiencing in Virginia, I knew that it would work everywhere. And so it, it I'm just so fortunate that I got to bring that to kids all over the world. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. So what were some of the challenges that you faced in starting your own business and how did you overcome them? So there are so many challenges because one, I'm a teacher at heart and I, my, you know, all of my educate, my formal education is in education. (laughs) And so without having a business degree, I had to self teach myself, which, you know, teachers are the best ones at that, right? We're constantly doing that anyway, but Every step of growth was brand new to me, you know, so first I'm building a business in my my local hometown that had its own set of challenges. Okay, now I'm completely changing my business model in that I'm now teaching other people how to replicate what I had created. And that's a whole new set of challenges and dealing with franchisees and it was the the hardest thing for me was when I had my own business in Virginia. I was in control of everything. I made all the decisions. I was the only one that I had to let down. If I made a mistake, I could beat myself up and I could get over it. When I started franchising, I now had all of these individual business owners who were counting on me to, you know, keep curriculum up to date, keep marketing up to date, you know, train them, support them. And so having now a whole bunch of other voices to, you know, agree, disagree with anything that I did and supporting them. And it's a huge responsibility. You know, if I make a mistake, I'm not just disappointing myself. I'm disappointing now all these other people who are relying on me because they're supporting their families with this business and they have employees. And it, that, that was the biggest challenge for sure is, you know, kind of relearning every single step of growth of the business. Yeah, I think it can be overwhelming learning everything you need to run your own business. But like you said, teachers are really amazing at figuring things out as they go and making those adjustments that are needed. So if you're listening, you're a teacher, you have that skill and it's just about believing that you can do it and working through those problems as they come. Definitely. Absolutely. So what resources do you think would be helpful for someone who wants to ditch the classroom and also feel free to share any resources you have that you think would be helpful for someone interested in your space? Sure. So I, about a year ago, I sold engineering for kids to a, an ed tech firm who also owns other uh, education brands. And so I kind of, I kind of took engineering for kids as far as I could take it. And um, now they, uh, a, a business that has many more uh, resources and a lot of money to pump into it um, is now, Uh, running engineering for kids. And so 
I'm too young to retire. And so what I do now is I help other women specifically get into entrepreneurship, specifically in the franchising space. And so I specialize in working with teachers. And so what I do now is I help people find the right franchise companies that fit their lifestyle and financial goals best. And so um, I have on my website, franchisingspot.com, I have a free course on franchising and my services are free to my clients. I kind of compare myself to a real estate broker. Instead of helping people find the right house, I help people find the right franchise. And there's thousands of franchises out there. And it's, it's not easy to sort through all of the different businesses. But franchising is really a great fit for teachers specifically. Um, when you are part of a franchise system, you are stepping into a business that has already been established. There's a website there for you. There's an email address ready for you. It's, you're basically, it's a business in a box um, and you have a team uh, to support you. So I, I love helping teachers get into the franchising industry. That's awesome. I will have the link in the show notes for those listening. So you can go check out the free franchising course that Dory offers. I know, I know it's amazing because she's amazing. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So if someone wanted to start their digital classroom journey, but they just felt too overwhelmed, what would you tell them? Networking is the biggest tip that I can provide. Um, and I found networking so beneficial to me every step of my journey in entrepreneurship. And I, I ultimately joined a, a women in franchising a networking group that we went to retreats and supported each other. And even, you know, post COVID, you know, text each other and, and communicate through Zoom and things like that. So I would say find your business bestie or a few and network with people who are in a similar situation. And then also network with people who are in the role that you want to be in. You know, so whatever it is that you want to do, find those people who are on your same path and then find those people who are at your destination and make those business besties. Yes, I love that. Entrepreneurship can be lonely sometimes. So definitely having that community and building that community is a really important piece. For sure. So it has been such a blessing having you on with us today, Dory. Where can my listeners come and find you, connect with you, learn more from you and just become your best friend? Sure, absolutely. So social media is a great place to find me. Franchising Spot is my business name for helping people find franchises. I also host a podcast as well called She Turned Entrepreneur. And that name came from being coined in several uh, news articles as the teacher turned entrepreneur. So I showcase women who have either ditch the classroom or ditch their other career and have become an entrepreneur. So I welcome you to follow me anywhere you can listen to podcasts and that's She Turned Entrepreneur. Perfect. And again, I will have those linked in the show notes for those of you listening. Well, like I said, it has been such a pleasure having you today, Dory. Thank you so much for coming on. And I cannot wait to just follow along with your journey. Thanks so much for having me. Yes. Thank you for listening. Make sure to go show Dory some love and just thank her for coming on the show with us. Leave a review on the podcast. That's how we get more amazing guests like Dory coming on here with us. And yeah, I love y'all and we will see you next week. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Before you go, make sure you take a minute to subscribe to the show, leave a rating and review, and check out the show notes for a free gift to help you ditch the classroom. If you loved today's episode, can you help me share the message by taking a screenshot, tagging me on Instagram at ariana.vernier, and sharing it with your friends so we can help more mamas ditch the classroom and follow their dreams. Until next week, y'all, keep following the dreams that were placed in your heart so you too can ditch the classroom.